Welcome aboard, classmates. This is Marcy Lee, your private pilot here to bring you information about wake turbulence when piloting a smaller aircraft. In-flight turbulence affecting aircraft is caused by changing air speeds and direction through which an aircraft is flying. Much like you might see eddies in a stream, these changes to the flow of air cause atmospheric turbulence. The pilot in this video did not heed the caution of wake turbulence of a larger, heavier aircraft descending for a landing at a different airport located to his right and had his own turbulent experience. There are four types of turbulence, such as convective, which is turbulence caused by thermal instability of hot and cold air that creates thunderstorms. Next is orographic, which refers to turbulence generated by strong winds over terrain such as mountains or obstacles. Clear air turbulence is usually located above and below the jet stream, which is narrow band of extremely strong winds impossible to detect on radar. However, there are calculations to detect geographical location, altitude, and size. And finally, our focus today is wake turbulence, which is a turbulence generated by aircraft as they pass through the air and a side effect of the generation of lift by the wing. Lift is produced by an aircraft's wing by means of a pressure difference between the lower and upper surfaces of the wing. Most of you are familiar with the first three if you have been lucky enough to experience turbulence while riding on a commercial aircraft. However, wake turbulence is usually experienced by pilots flying smaller aircraft, taking off, landing, or crossing paths with a jet. In a very basic explanation, the air above the wing flows at a greater speed to that below, resulting in a lower pressure above and a higher pressure below. The difference in the pressure produces lift, but where the low and high pressure air mixes at the wing tips, wing vortices are produced. The airflow rolls from below the wing around the wing tip to the top of the wing, creating two counter rotating vortices behind the aircraft. The biggest components in determining the strength of vortices in commercial aviation are the weight and shape of the aircraft. And the greatest vortex strength occurs when the generating aircraft is heavy and slow, as in takeoff or landing. Wake turbulence is most dangerous on takeoff and landing. According to the FAA, the key points to avoid this type of turbulence when following a larger aircraft on final approach for landing is to stay at or above the larger aircraft's flight path. The second point is to note where the larger plane touches down on the runway and land beyond that point. Why, you ask? When an aircraft is flying, the wingtip vortices produced by the aircraft slowly descend behind the airplane, and when the aircraft touches down or lands, the vortices end. And slowly dissipate. By flying your airplane above their flight path and landing beyond their touchdown point, you're almost guaranteed to avoid a wake turbulence encounter. Avoiding wake turbulence on takeoff is a bit trickier because larger aircraft often climb much faster than smaller general aviation airplanes. Since vortex production starts when an aircraft takes off, it's important for you to lift off prior to the point of the previous aircraft. However, after you've lifted off, you have a second issue. If you maintain the same heading as the aircraft in front of you, the potential to fly through their wake is very high. By maneuvering left or right of the runway after takeoff, you can ensure you stay clear of the vortices. As you can see in this picture, you should lift off the runway prior to the point at which the preceding aircraft lifts off. Maneuver your aircraft to avoid the flight path of the preceding aircraft. Pilots must also consider the wind in avoiding wake turbulence because wingtip vortices drift with the wind at the same speed as the wind. The good news is there is one final option. Wait it out. Get some coffee. Wake turbulence doesn't last forever and it begins dissipating as soon as it is produced by an airplane. According to the FAA, if a pilot is unsure of the other aircraft's takeoff or landing point, 
approximately three minutes provides a margin of safety that allows wake turbulence dissipation. The next time you hear the tower say, caution, wake turbulence, pilots should take a second to think through the steps to stay upright and in smooth air. This NASA research video is a great example of the strength of wingtip vortices, which have been known to sweep a small aircraft off a runway if they are not paying attention. Thank you classmates for attending the safety workshop on wake turbulence. Fly safe and have a great day.